peace. <laughs> Happy now. Now the vibrate, of course. We're not going too far in the future. Not going too far in the past. Right now. I feel like I gotta start practicing how to be able to talk talk slow and take my time. I know a lot of it has to do with trying to, you know, get these words out before I have like a little memory lapses or whatever, you know. But I still find that sometimes which I'm breathing heavy because I just finished doing some push-ups trying to <laughs> get uh, energy together because I realized like, you know, well, sometimes I still do videos as if I'm nervous to a certain extent. And I'm like, God damn, like you done did like a thousand videos. Like, why you still got this vibe? But again, I, I know what it stems from just mentally whenever you're in front of the camera just feel like you have to always constantly be talking and that's and that's just more so my percept you know just me dealing with my internal perception of it because you know of course you got some people that uh have no trouble taking their time and being on camera you know but that has nothing to do with what we're talking about <laughs> uh i want to speak on information dealing with uh stanley kubrick matter of fact i brought up stanley kubrick before dealing with uh eyes wide shut you know matter of fact a famous director also did the movie uh the shining you no know, but a very uh you no know, director and matter of fact uh let's see the shining eyes wide shut 2001 uh the space odyssey but basically uh i came across a dr phil valentine lecture matter of fact the, the lecture is called dr phil valentine the quantum truth that neil degrassi tyson and others won't reveal and it's on the Black Magic channel. Matter of fact, shout out to Brother Rich as always. The Black Magic uh, channel, uh, B L A C K M A G I K 363. That's the name of the channel. Again, brother, I have no problem showing love to the brethren and sister, especially when I, I learn so much or get so much insight from different channels. Like, I gotta give kudos. Matter of fact, because Again, that's a part of my experience, you know, me sharing truly because I'm not one of the people that like, you know, share knowledge and then act like this, you know, like, and don't want to say where I'm getting it from and acting like, you know, oh yeah, it's just coming out the sky or this and, you know, no, I watched this video, that video, <laughs> you know, come from a different, different places, different perspectives. But, uh, in this video, basically Phil Valentine breaking down, like, the beginning of the Jesu the Jesuits uh, dealing with Ignatius of Loyola, you know, and how he started the Jesuits and how the Jesuits was basically like this, uh, you know, gangsterized system in essence. It's basically like an army, you know, for the Catholic Church and an army that basically kills any and all, you know, regardless, like, but in the name of just making sure the truth don't, or uh, should I say the reality don't come to light, because the truth in essence is what we make it in like with the catholic church and things of this nature that's why they were trying to get everybody you know pimp everybody mind into the same you know idea because our thoughts you know, our, our mind manifests this realm you know as a matter of fact i always uh bring up that analogy like pokemon you know they they try to use us like pokemon like they they give us this image so we could create the world that they want to see you know basically using our magic <laughs> you know and, and then they make movies about it and put it in your face and matter of fact just you know taking my time getting into the information uh, of course you know with hollywood you know the wood from a holly tree matter of fact the movie bright with will smith you know with the the magic wand you know matter of fact it's a double entendre with that movie 
being, you know, a movie within Hollywood, you know, matter of fact, and it took place in L.A., but uh, you see the constant, you know, uh, how can I say, to a certain extent, slap in the face of how, you know, what a... Uh, where they do what they do and also give you clues and hints of what they doing to you, you know what I'm saying? But again, Hollywood, you know, that magic, you know, spell, like spelling words to cast a spell and then cast like a cast of a movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it all correlate. But anyway, uh, getting a little back into the information, Dr. Phil Valentine brought up this picture you know, because matter of fact, he was speaking on how, you know, the Jesuits, basically what their main thing is trying to make everybody believe in this globe. And matter of fact, as Phil Valentine was saying in the video, he was like, and I'm not one of those uh, flat earthers either. He was like, you know, just uh, using the facts and knowing that this is, uh, you know, not a globe for sure, for sure. You know, and he was breaking down. Matter of fact, if you haven't watched that video Either go watch it before you finish watching this video or watch it after you watch this video, but you definitely should watch it. Like, it's like you denying yourself spiritual liberation by not going to check it out. Because <laughs> if, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Dr. Phil Valentine, you know, this is like being broke down with, with uh, PowerPoint slides and pictures and everything, you know what I'm saying? So, definitely should check it out. But he, he, he breaking down like the Jesuits starting from with uh, Copernicus and just all the different little lies they've been trying to, uh, you know, create, dealing with, you know, the planets and the way the universe moves and stuff like that. Because matter of fact, as, I, as I'm speaking on that, you know, a lot of people may wonder like, man, are there really planets out there? Are there really, you know, of course, there are... Put it like this as above so below because the universe exists inside of us it exists outside of us as well but matter of fact and dealing with the earth like i i spoke to the earth being like the game san andreas and matter of fact that's kind of like you know how phil valentine speak on it as well it's like more of an infinite plane and not just no no flat planet in that sense you know what i'm saying but matter of fact a plane in a net you know what I'm saying? Plane, net, planet. But anyway, uh, <laughs> it's more of just like an infinite place. As a matter of fact, you think about yourself playing a game. You know, matter of fact, well, here it is. And two, maybe that's why they use the cube analogies, you know, with us being in this box or this cube. But like, uh, if I was to be playing San Andreas, you know, Grand Theft Auto on my game, I mean, on, yeah, on my game and watching it through the TV screen, like, there's a infinite world within that game, but I'm only experiencing what I could see on my TV screen, you know, and the immediate universe of wherever that character goes. And just like, you know, uh, or say, for instance, you know, with us on this plane, just like a game, you know, say, for instance, you know, uh, up until you pass a certain board or complete a certain task, you're not able to go to this point on the map or the grid you know within the in the game you know and once you complete that task then you're able to go to this new city or this new state or whatever you know within the game and i see our existence like that dealing with you know uh expanding the the globe like everything like from traveling deeper into the oceans to going past this little barrier or aka antarctica you know what i'm saying like once we pass all the the game of being duped by governmental lies and stuff like that, then it's like, oh, like, y'all made it to the next level. You get to expand on this earth, earthly plane, you know, on this infinite plane in essence. But uh, definitely gets into the, you know, to that information, but to not veer off too uh, far again, back to the idea with the Jesuits trying to, you know, again, like create this uh and matter of fact he called it like the quantum physics like coat or the quantum physics game you know but a bunch of matter of fact because he spoke on Neil deGrasse Tyson uh he even showed how Stephen Hawking possibly died a long time ago and they're using like a double to represent him right now you know but it's all about pushing the agenda and, and even the Pope I think the Pope right now or the last Pope 
is like the first pope to be a pope and a Jesuit. But the Jesuits are basically, you know, again, trying to make everybody, you know, matter of fact, you got this, uh, this Asian guy, Paku, uh, Maku, I forgot his name, that's trying to get everybody on the Mars tip. But anyway, Dr. Phil Valentine get into it on that video, so I don't want to stray away from it too much because, you know, nothing gets better than, you know, the explanation in essence that uh, he gave. But one of the things, you know, that he showed, there's no coin. Matter of fact, kudos to this book. Again, <laughs> this book is the truth. Matter of fact, shout out to the author, Jay Dyer. But. Let's see. But this is a uh, Stanley Kubrick right here. I think this is a uh, Arthur Arthur Clark. Uh, who it is? Deke Slayton and Fred Orway and George Mueller. And I'm about to tell y'all who those guys are. But uh, Fred Orway is a NASA scientist. Uh, no, NASA scientific consultant that basically Kubrick called upon uh, for the movie 2001 The Space Odyssey. So Fred Arway was basically like a NASA consultant that, in essence, for two reasons, to make the movie seem a little realistic, but also to drop in the propaganda that NASA wants the people to, you know, be programmed into. Because, matter of fact, uh... If you don't recall or if you haven't watched, I did a video speaking on Operation Paperclip a while back. Operation Paperclip was when, uh, you know, some of the Nazi soldiers just got transferred directly into starting the NASA program. Matter of fact, because one of those uh, people are the main person in essence, Dr. Werner Von Braun. Werner, W-E-R-N-H-E-R, Von, V-O-N, Braun, B-R-A-U-N. A founding member of NASA, uh, Nazi scientist who came to America via, via the Vatican rat lines, quote unquote, uh, in a code name Operation Paperclip. You know. So you see how again the same people all in cahoots. You know what I'm saying? And and but at the same time having beefs within themselves because I spoke to that like the Third Reich. Are like a part of like uh, the Germans or the Hitlers or uh, the Hitlers, <laughs> not some of the Nazis, you know, uh, getting killed or whatever, had to do with either the banks or the Freemasonry. Like, you know, even though they all in cahoots with trying to create this this fake construct of a world they want to see, you know, they they had they little beefing moments as well, but they keep it quiet. You know, my fact. <laughs> You know, because it's so much of a construct of a brotherhood of like just trying, like killing off melanated people and, and keeping the world brainwashed is way more important. So it's like regardless of their little scuffles, they, they make sure they keep it as quiet as possible. You know, matter of fact, compared to us where we throw each other dirty laundry out at the crack of a finger, you know what I'm saying? The snap of a finger. Like, oh, <laughs> Bill Cosby, da -da. it's like, man. <laughs> anyway, so also pictured <laughs> Deke Slayton, the original NASA, uh, original NASA Mercury Seven astronaut, uh, NASA's first chief of the astronaut office, and then uh, Arthur Clarke is a uh, British science fiction writer, co-writer of 2001: The Space Odyssey. So Arthur Clarke. Uh, picture walking on side of Stanley Kubrick also helped with uh, doing the movie Space Odyssey in which he also redid Space Odyssey called a 3001 Space uh, let's see if I got it here without going too far yep uh, the final Odyssey but and in that depiction he basically has God as an advanced AI that was created long ago and basically, uh, in essence, pushing that transhuman agenda. That's another thing, trying to brainwash it, trying to push, you know, their agendas. That's all through Hollywood, MK Ultra. These, all these people is all in cahoots. 
uh, in which I'm a later I'm a go and read through this book and uh, you know just uh, introduce y'all to certain people that you might want to research or research their work. But you see the uh, the transhumanism vibe being brought in as well. You know, like everything about artificial. And matter of fact, the main thing with that, which is a download for me to share that with y'all, because uh, I was gonna do a video about about the transhumanism because I caught a download about it. But then as I did it, and I messed up a little bit in the video, and I stopped, and I took it as a sign that it was meant for me like to not do it. Cause uh, maybe it was gonna fear monger, or I didn't, or you know, had a, it had a feeling of maybe fear mongering, but then I see like nah, you know, or maybe it was that I was not delivering it in a clean enough manner, so it was like the universe was like nah, you gotta clean that up, you fear mongering a little bit too much, but the 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 the, the reason for the transhumanism vibe and reason why they're trying to push it heavily right now, one of the main reasons, is so they could. Uh, make it acceptable to create soldiers, you know, for the army and for what they're dealing with. And whether it's actual humanoid soldiers or just to have like just straight up robots, you know, on their team or whatever. You know, that's the whole vibe with that. But you know, but again, you see uh, a direct correlation with Stanley Kubrick. You know, walking with these brethren. As a matter of fact, some more sauce is really new to me. You know, I'm about to get it. Matter of fact, I'm about to read, you know, straight from the book. As a matter of fact, before I do that, I just got to always give, you know, just a little quick shot. For the literature. But, uh, so I'm reading straight from the book, but this is about to get into how. You know, again, you see all these people influencing each other. You know, Stanley Kubrick influenced by Aleister Crowley. But, all right, about to read, quote unquote. Whatever one, one's view of the space program and the moon landing, there is evidence that trickery and deception were involved, as well as the use of Disney sound stages for some shots. In fact, and matter of fact, oh, as I said, hey, I want to at least give y'all, you know, they do have a little uh, side note and this comes from uh, www.checktheevidence.com it's a PDF from Dave McGowan uh, talking about wagging the moon doggy but that's where they you know get that information from so if you want to go and uh, you know check that little footnote or whatever it is there for you to check <laughs> kudos to the brethren J. Dye <laughs> but alright so I'm going to read again. Whatever one view of the space program and the moon landing, there's evidence that trickery and deception were involved, as well as the use of Disney sound stages for some shots. In fact, it is undeniable that Kubrick worked with NASA in some capacity, as we saw. While the references to Crowley might seem strange, recall that Crowley claimed he communicated with a spirit that was famously that has famously been identified as an early image of what would become the modern archetype for the alien and like E.T. was a practice, practice, practitioner of sexual tantrism. Crowley, Kubrick, Clark, and Spielberg all promote the alien overlord mythos uh, within the movies. As a matter of fact, Spielberg, Spielberg, looking up, Spielberg created E.T. Spielberg also... Uh, Created the movie Artificial Intelligence, which was really a, a screenplay written by Stanley Kubrick, you know, but uh, Spielberg made it a movie. So you see how, you know, again, they pushing, pushing these agendas and it, you know, all deals with trans, a lot of transhumanism and fake alien vibes, you know what I'm saying? But right here, you know, come straight from Crowley literature. And it's new to me, so I ain't know, you know, that the alien, you know, what you, the gray, like, you know, how they depict the quote-unquote grays, the aliens like that. Like, that come from Aleister Crowley. <laughs> you know, so you see how, you know, and again, people like, oh, he was a devil, devil worshiper, isn't that? Nah, he was studying indigenous 
information, indigenous spiritual information, and partially making it seem like, oh, it's it's scary. This is the devil. Uh, you know, to scare people away from it, you know, especially melanated people. And you see it now today, like, oh, no, that's the devil or this day or the, you know, scan you away from your own information. And to add to uh, what I just spoke on, Kubrick had taken the potential to a new level with his technical innovations and cinematic special effects that wowed the military industrial complex. Spielberg is paying homage to what Kubrick had done and decided to take the same techniques, uh, you know, to the next level, you know, and uh, take those same techniques to use that magic movie making, you know, to, to, to create that effectiveness of the magic movie. You know, he borrowed the concept from Kubrick, you know. Now, in fact, they speak on Hollywood is the most powerful propaganda complex in history, according to Bernays. And matter of fact, Bernays I just saw something not to we'll go uh we'll touch back on Bernays, I guess. I think. Oh no. Edward Bernays, nephew of Sigmund Freud, and again you see all the Freudian and you Carl Jung and Aldous Huxley and Dion Fortune and H.P. Blavatsky and uh, Ephesius Levi and uh, Kenneth Grant and like all these you know these different people matter of fact though you see the ones that and you see that there's no coincidence that they always are going to produce the or, or, or promote the people who deals with their agenda, you know what I'm saying? That's why, I like, low key, I, I bring up the reality of the situation, you know, like with the, you know, Beyonce's, Jay Z's of the world, with them people, you know, getting that bread in essence. To a certain extent, you know, they 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 playing both sides of the fence, literally, you know, just to be honest, you know, it ain't you know pop a leg, but you know they playing it safe. <laughs> You know they 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 doing shit that does help to program you in a in a non-beneficial way but then you know they because they soul is present you know what i'm saying like they find ways to also drip sauce and you know uh because they're trying to keep you know their status of money in essence you know hopefully a lot of them you know uh continue to grow in a manner where they you know, getting the money, you know, get playing the white people game in essence, playing that, you know, that vibe. So they could, you know, and when I say white people, you know, I don't mean all of y'all. <laughs> you know, some of y'all people be tripping. They, they partially my people too, they be tripping. <laughs> and anyway, <laughs> Edward Bernays, uh, nephew of Sigmund Freud and famed for his works on propaganda and mass advertisement. Brene, as a matter of fact, I always tell people, like, the people of a PR department, like, they they go learn psycholog psychology and sociology to the utmost, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why it becomes uh, stupid for them to be like, oh, well, we didn't know we was programming like y programming y'all like that. Well, shit, here it is that y'all make sure that y'all have such a high standard for college graduates, you know, like, you only accept the highest or the best of the best in this department. And how it is that you get to claim ignorance now that you done got found out. It's like, oh, well, we didn't know that we were training people to program subconscious minds. We didn't know we were getting the best of the best of psychological studiers. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop it. And anyway, again, Edward Bernays, the nephew of Sigmund Freud, and fame, uh, fame for his works on propaganda and mass advertisement. Bernays pioneered methods and techniques for influencing and altering mass opinion. Bernays focused on crowd psychology and for a time worked for the U.S. government in originating the concept of public relations and the herd instinct. Damn, I didn't even know they were about to talk about the PR department and they end up just the synchronicity. <laughs> just intuition, just, just, uh popping off and live on the screen but uh so yeah that that bread and responsible for pr departments pr public relations the psychologist the pr department 
you know. But we're gonna get back into some other names, but you know, but again, just showing you the correlation. You know, with Kubrick, and matter of fact, also, you know, with Disney, because again, they filmed this, you know, at Disney at a Disney studio. So you see how all of these things in cahoots, and how Disney always trying to, you know, put some esoteric vibes into your face you know like they got at the atlantis uh movie which i wanted to do a video on that but i uh you know didn't get into it but uh just different movies that have you know these uh these themes but also speaking to the fact that uh so like George Lucas, George Lucas recently, you know, not too long ago, sold his company to Walt Disney. You know, uh, Marvel just uh, sold themselves to, to Walt Disney. Uh, ESPN, you know, like everything. Matter of fact, I even predict in the future that it'll be a time where Disney is just the main producer, you know, of their bullshit ass media. Because which, as we grow, is going to be a place where, you know, the more quote unquote or should I say the the reality the cause I want to say the true information but the more real the real things will be more up front you know what I'm saying so uh it'll be more like uh say for instance like information like what's on this YouTube channel stuff like that you know we're gonna have more knowledge and more things out there but you know because they still gonna be trying to fight and hold on to what they trying to hold on to. They probably gonna not probably. It seems like that's the move that Walt Disney just gonna become, you know, the company that just is over all entertainment. You know, the fuck it turned uh, Hollywood into Disneywood or Disneyland. Like just the whole like Disneyland owns the city of Los Angeles. Like you know that probably be the next step. <laughs> Some shit. You know what I'm saying? But uh. You see how, you know, Disney trying to swallow up everything, you know. So there's no coincidences. Or how all these things line up. You know, and again, with the movie uh, Artificial Intelligence, you know, written by Stanley Kubrick, but then Steven Spielberg end up picking it up. As a matter of fact, just to uh, brief on Stanley Kubrick right quick. Stanley Kubrick, born in 1928, died in 1999, American filmmaker, director, screenwriter, and producer, frequently cited as one of the most important filmmakers in history. <laughs> and two, as another thing, whoever they, oh, you know, I think Stanley Kubrick is the most genius person ever. Like, that's how they be giving kudos all to each other with all their own little shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh... In, in uh let's see yeah and often considered the greatest a demanding perfectionist kubrick paid special attention to details especially in uh in sound and music and film kubrick is known for iconic classics like spartacus lolita dr strange love a clockwork orange 2001 a space odyssey the shining and eyes wide shut you know so you see uh and the moon landing. We forgot about that. <laughs> and we also filmed the moon landing. Him and Arthur Clark. You know, pictured again, pictured walking with each other in that uh in that picture I showed you. Matter of fact, his daughter spoke about that, you know, about uh again her father, uh what's her name? Vivian Kubrick. Uh, Vivian Kubrick spoke on how she saw her dad dealing with CIA agents as well, you know. So you see that collection, I mean that connection with the, you know, CIA, the government, the MK Ultra programs, you know. Matter of fact, Aldux Huxley, you know what I'm saying, with uh, always speaking on the dystopia vibe, you know what I'm saying. A lot of people with those dystopia movies get that, you know, uh, like, the Matrix, somewhat like that. Uh, and matter of fact, the Wachowski sisters used to be brothers. And matter of fact, you see, they love vibe, you know, to each his own. <laughs> but uh, the Wachowski brothers, who 
did a uh, cloud atlas uh the matrix but they all you know again if you ask i bet you if you ask you know uh any of them brethren you know the the wakowski sisters you know who's their favorite they're gonna say one of these people in this book like i i like carl jung or sigmund fraud i really studied you know uh alistair crowley and you know uh Dion fortune like all these little and matter of fact in the correlation too just like less parts of the subconscious programming you know artificial intelligence is no coincidence that spielberg made this movie come out in 2001 in which you know in essence you know uh mimicking uh stanley kubrick you know stanley kubrick did that movie 2001 the space odyssey and he wrote he and he wrote artificial intelligence steven spielberg just brought it out as a movie you know because matter of fact speaking to that vibe you know you got uh jules verne which is has that same vibe like he's a uh matter of fact french novelist playwright and matter of fact from 18 he's born 1828 uh transition 1905 French novelist, playwright, and poet Verne Arthur, uh, Verne author of some of the most famous adventure novels of all time that will have a profound influence on the various liter literary genres globally. His famed works include classics such as Journey to the Center of the Earth, Around the World in Eighty Days, and Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Verne is the second most translated author in the world after Shakespeare. And along with H.G. Wells and Hugo Gernsback, is considered the father of science fiction. You know. And then, matter of fact, since I'm right here, uh, you know, speaking on H.G. Wells, H.G. Wells uh, from 1866, transition 1946, famed English author, generally known for his science fiction works that are some of the most well known of all time such as the time machine the island of dr moreau and war of the worlds well science fiction works have had an unparalleled influence not just on literature but also on hollywood along with jules verne's wells is considered the father of science fiction a zealous marxist and adherent of the fabian ideology Wells was also a Freemason and radical proponent of scientism and eugenics. You know, so you see, you know, the free Freemason vibes, you know, spoken of. Matter of fact, and also I can't forget uh, if I didn't mention H.P. Lovecraft. You know, the basic motto of your horror movies, you know, comes from the uh, Necronomicon. You know, dealing with Cthulhu. The great old ones, but the great old ones is a personification of that, you know, primordial God self that we've been away from for so long that our human self is like scared of. It's like a monster to our human self, you know, but they personify it in this man and they turn it into movies to program your subconscious to be scared of the dark or to be scared of contacting, you know, God. That's why in a lot of these Disney movies, you know, when I think about, I don't know if it's the Ice King or the Moon, it was uh oh kubo i did a video a while back about this little movie kubo and i don't think it i can't remember if it was a disney movie but anyway the the theme was that you know he had come from his his, his mom and his grandfather were like these moon type of beings like gods but they made them seem like they were evil you know what i'm saying to 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 program little children to be scared of the god within themselves and to be programming into you know embracing just their lower nature as if they're not you know uh godly you know so all these little programming you know be into all everything that they do you know and again this is the same people working with nasa <laughs> you know what i'm saying so when you see all those cgi images of this is what jupiter is looking like this and that why in the fuck you can't tell me what the bottom of sea look the bottom of the sea that's right here on this planet, on this plane. You know what I'm saying? Why you can't tell what the bottom of the sea look like? Or, you know, why we not going past this Antarctica area? You know what I'm saying? 
it's quote unquote at the bottom of this globe which again you know and, and go check out that dr phil valentine video man because again he even had pictures comparing like what they had that man that jumped from so high you know where it was almost like seemed like he was in space like where he jumped from and you show how you know the where you look at the thing and it show like a flat plane like you know but then they added the curvature but when they added the curvature you could tell they did like a a fish bubble lens in essence or like a you know some type of visual effects but to the point where they had like a like a metal bar that should be straight in the picture but then they curved in the other picture when they tried to curve the earth you know what i'm saying showing like how they modified it. again go check it out for yourself check it out for yourself <laughs> But uh, definitely just wanted to uh, just again show the correlations. You know, you see how Alistair Crowley, the one, so in essence, you know, the image of what you got, like the big headed alien, in essence, come from Alistair Crowley. And I thought, I didn't even know that. You know, that's, that's new to me. Matter of fact, speak on, uh, and matter of fact, uh, Arson Wells. Who's another matter of fact? I remember, and you see all these little, little points. Cause what's funny how subconscious programming little points in the movie. I remember Arson Wells. I feel like the first time I really heard his name and it and it stayed there was when I uh, watched the movie Super Bad. You know, uh, Jonah Hill was like, "Do I look like fucking Arson Wells or something?" You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, using those little that, but that be little points. You know what I'm saying? Even in Super Bad, you know, again what he's these stars, you know, of course, they could claim to want to help humanity, but they also, you know, in alignment with the Hollywood magic and bullshitting people's minds and subconscious as well. So, you know, that's where it kind of gets to a point like, well, you know, beings who really about waking people up kind of standoffish about, you know, uh, you know, some of the actors and entertainers and stuff like that, you know, which we shouldn't be, you know, we all on different parts of our journey different parts of our path some of us meant to go deep undercover some of us meant to just work from the office in essence you know what i'm saying while some people going deep undercover some people get caught up in their undercover roles or they get snuffed out and they end up you know <laughs> just like in, in in the vice versa role of you know somebody going undercover you know they gotta act exactly like the people that they undercover you know investigating in essence are you know trying to infiltrate they gotta act exactly like that so with some of these you know again like jay-z to beyonce and stuff like this where in order for them to get that money on that level you know they kind of got to play a certain little role you know what i'm saying to to be able to uh get that change and we all different on how we feel about doing that you know some of us like fuck that i ain't doing that at all some of us like shit i play the game you know however to each his own Anyway, Arson Wells, uh, born 1915, transitioned 1985, American actor, director, and film producer. Wells is generally classed with eminent figures like Hitchcock and Kubrick as one of the greatest directors of all time, with his Citizen Kane in 1941, often ranked by critics and film scholars as the greatest film of all time. Wells also participated in a Rockefeller-funded psychological operation known as the infamous 1938 War of the Worlds broadcast. Wells broadcast H.G. Wells, who I just spoke about, you know, the other Wells. Uh, Wells broadcast H.G. Wells' famous novel on a radio drama resulting in mass chaos and panic as the public assumed the account was real. You know, so these fools actually like put this this broadcast you know as if it was really happening on the radio you know what i'm saying but again playing their little games testing out people mental because if everybody wouldn't have panicked so much or you know wouldn't have fell into it they'd be like oh shit you know these people are a little more woke than we we think we can't just be doing anything out there you know we got to tiptoe into programming them instead of just thinking they're so stupid that we could just hit them with anything you know but uh, anyway, this incident is a crucial early example of the nexus between the shadow government, uh, the academic establishment, and Hollywood. 
you know, so showing like the correlation between the shadow government, you know, the, the, the education system or academic establishment in Hollywood. It's all, again, because they give you the word magic, you know, in school, you know, you deal with the, the word magic, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you're indoctrinated to learn just about what they want you to learn. You know, you get your subconscious program right there. Get your subconscious program when you're watching TV or, you know, dealing with Hollywood, you know. <laughs> and again, the subconscious is programmed through symbols, you know. So, you know, it's not necessarily the words that being spoken on a movie, but it's like what's being acted out in these different scenes, you know, like the symbol of what the actors is doing and saying or the background or, you know, it's like what we visually seeing. You know, without the words, in that sense, you know, that really does uh, a lot of the programming. You know, and again, these all people who study, you know, uh, Pavlo's dogs and, you know, how the dogs sal salivate, you know, uh, after hearing the bell, even when food not being brought up, you know. If you go look at the uh, Pavlo's uh, dogs uh, information. But, you know, you see how, uh, again, uh, all these things correlate. Oh, wait, one. Uh, matter of fact, uh, on Arthur Clark uh, information, the snippet. Uh, from 1917, you know, uh, born, transitioned 2008. English science fiction writer, futurist, and television host, Clark was a member of the Royal Air Force and was awarded a knighthood in 1996. So the person who programs people subconscious to keep them away from them God for, from their God self was actually knighted. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> By the Queen in England. Just saying, you know, again, this is the evidence, you know, I'm I, I don't even have to like this is through most of this video I'm just speaking like different little facts and information. Like I haven't really been like, you know, yeah, y'all should do this and do like, you know, more so like be aware or like put my own sauce in it. Of course I've been, you know, speaking from my perspective in essence but uh this is all like facts you know what i'm saying like they night knighted somebody who dealt with nasa you know what i'm saying we all know we see and again we see the correlations you know operation paperclip move all these germans as a matter of fact you see it's like a lot of german a lot of british people german people that's because they always stayed in cahoots all that holocaust holocaust wasn't nothing but practice for what's going on right now in essence on a chemical level basically like the chemical warfare of like what monsanto doing and all the different food situations like that was being dealt with and practiced during the holocaust you know what i'm saying matter of fact let me finish uh, speaking on this let me read uh so arthur clark you know matter of fact the co-writer of 2001 a space odyssey uh that was uh, written also by Stanley Kubrick, speaking on him. An English science fiction writer, futurist, and television host, Clark was a member of the Royal Air Force and was awarded a knighthood in 1996 amid scandalous accusations. So even despite his scandalous accusations, he was still given knighthood. They're like, fuck that, you are boy. Fuck what they think. <laughs> See, they look out for each other regardless, you know. But when when uh, Michael Jackson gets set up to look like he touching on kids, we all like, oh, Mike touching on them little kids. Uh, Mike touching on them little kids. Like, you know, to a certain as small as that seems, like it's like, uh, or I ain't gonna say as small as it seems, but like, you know, like how little it may seem to worry about laughing at Michael Jackson for that situation. That's really something serious in the essence of like, man, you know, 
here it is that this brethren got framed for this shit and people still like adding on to the framework by you know by still knocking them and still like oh yeah he probably did that this and that no man look at the way this beast operates you know what i'm saying again uh go check out the young pharaoh uh video on uh bill cosby you know recently and i did a video on that you know it tearing down each other but this brethren was going through some scandalous accusations that he got knighted by the queen of england it's like oh i got you bro <laughs> You know, it's just that vibe. But uh, a staunch proponent of scientism, Clark co-wrote the script with Stanley Kubrick for 2001: The Space Odyssey, one of the preeminent science fiction films of all time. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do a, a video on that once I uh, find somewhere to watch it. Again, you see all these you know, correlations between these different people. Charles Darwin from 1809 to 1882, English geologist and naturalist known for the publication of his of of his on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle of life in 1859. Originally a theist, Darwin eventually abandoned theism for a purely random naturalistic account of the origins of life through natural selection. You know, Darwin trying to implement his little, you know, matter of fact, he uh he is he closely uh how can I say that to promote the us coming from monkeys vibe kind of saw it like that's one of his main little you know things matter of fact and Kubrick has this all in uh, 2001 Space Odyssey I'm just showing you some of these pictures you know there's a picture of uh, Jack Nicholson almost looking like the Baphomet and again Baphomet they again just like this crystal you know I use this crystal to spiritually heal myself or I could take this this these crystals and, and use the energy to direct uh, harm towards somebody but it's all my choice does that make the crystal evil or good no the crystal is just the crystal that's me with my intentions taking it and going in a certain direction with it so the same thing with the Baphomet, man. It's just a representation of our, you know, lower nature being in, our, in the physical realm, you know. But they take it and turn it into something that they try to make you scared of. But again, you see, I got this little as above, so below. That's what that, you know, one arm down, point down, the other one up. It's like as above, so below. I bet because I counter, because that's how I started taking some of my pictures. <laughs> like, dang, as above, so below. As a matter of fact, Kubrick also did The Shining, you know, uh, that movie as well. As a matter of fact, let me see, uh, as a matter of fact, The Shining, uh, definitely deals with that Freudian psychoanalysis you know so that uh, Freud vibe of like you know the archetypes of the internal psyche in essence which Carl Jung really uh, get into the archetypes in essence but the shining uh It's basically like a horror, you know, horror story, but it just has uh, deeper implications. Like, matter of fact, they even have, uh, like, his son put up a magic circle with little stickers. Like, it's little subconscious programming just like that, but, uh, which you can't see the picture good.
I don't know, but she, the mom looking at the son, uh, he got like a, some stickers in the form of a magic circle on the wall. And you've seen the magic circles. I spoke on the magic circles within eyes wide shut. You know, you see it there as well. But also, it's a. Uh, let's see. Because that move is uh, one to program. It's kind of tapping into the energy dealing with the, the ancestral energy in essence because you know this uh like the move in essence kind of take place around ancient indian uh ancient i'm sorry <laughs> ancient indigenous uh beings uh like you know mounds or little area or whatever and it's also like a play on the haunting of america like so you know, with some movies, just kind of personification of the whole haunting of America, like from the slavery, from, you know, the rape and the pillaging, like all that being personified back out. Matter of fact, I'm going to do, do a different uh, video on that. I just wanted to, you know, again, show the correlation. You know, you got, you know, uh, the moon landing, you know, you got Stanley Kubrick, who, you know, again, pictured with these different people from NASA and also his his co-writer from 2001 Space Odyssey Arthur Clarke you know walking with him but you see all the uh, you know correlations of all these different movies you know as a matter of fact uh, again I spoke on like the Disney being in cahoots you know Disney swallowing up uh, matter of fact Lucasfilm so that's Star Wars and Indiana Jones, like all that, that's Disney now, you know what I'm saying? Like they all uh, in cahoots with each other, matter of fact, to show another little aspect while I'm here. Where is it? Well, they speak on the... Uh, this little place in Hollywood, oh, Lookout Mountain Film Studio. Situated atop Laurel Canyon in Los Angeles, California, down the infamous Mulholland Drive onto Wonderland Ave, the Lookout Mountain facility was formerly under the aegis of the U.S. Air Force and functioned as a private top secret film studio from the 1940s to the 1960s. Notably, for its production of the famous atomic bomb test footage, Lookout Mountain was reportedly utilized by high, by the highest levels of both Hollywood and the military for countless unknown projects. The facility is known, I mean the facility is now the private home of actor Jared Leto. Matter of fact, which I don't think I would actually pass down. When I go back though, I'm definitely, matter of fact, Y'all could definitely get ready for it. I'm going to do a video on Mulholland Holland Drive. Because, <laughs> matter of fact, Mulholland Holland Drive also, you know, has a connection with uh, Charles Manson. You know, and the Manson murders. And, you know, you see, like, uh, again, with this Hollywood vibe and dealing with the actors. But, let's see. Matter of fact, I speak on a... a Let's see. So I'm about to read directly from the book again, as far as like on a quote. Let's see. Mulholland Drive, the actual street, has a connection to the Manson murders that few have noticed. Esoteric writer Peter Lavenda, uh, Lavenda L E V E N D A, explains in his Sinister Forces book two. I'm about to read from the book. Helter Skelter was Manson's program for the brainwashed murders. It provided a context and it also it, it provided a context and it also influenced their choice of bloody graffiti at each scene, thus attempting to lay the crimes off on the Black Panthers. The brilliance behind this crime the brilliance behind these crimes had nothing to do with Manson himself. The brilliance was in, in selecting Manson and his assassins as the hit team for it obscured the real motives and thus the real powers behind them 
further due to the sensitive nature of the victims involved and their incestuous relationships with Hollywood, occultism, drugs, and alternative sexual practices, much of it captured on videotape, there was little... Uh, let, let me read that again because I, I know that was like a run on. Further due to the sensitive nature of the victims involved and their incestuous relationships with Hollywood, occultism, drugs, and alternative sexual practices, much of it captured on videotape, there was little danger of their friends running to the police with information that could get them real, you know, to get the real masterminds in trouble. The blood had splattered all over Benedict Canyon in the aerial spray that reached Mulholland Drive, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, North Hollywood, and Malibu, and the back lots of studios all over town. Drugs, murders, drugs, murder for hire, sodomous, uh, sodomous, sarcastic. Oh my goodness, that is a word that just seemed like it's trying to do too much. <laughs> sodomous, sarcastic. S A D O M A S O C H I S T I C. Sodomasochistic. I apologize, y'all. I'm not going to say this word correctly. And I'm just keep trying. <laughs> All right, let me finish. Drugs, murder, for, drugs, murder for high, and sodomous. Which is, in other words, I get what it's saying, like. Like how they talk about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know what I'm saying? But like dealing with the lower, lower nature. But uh, sex on videotape involving celebrities and sa satanic rituals, you know. So basically, uh, drug, drugs, murder for hire, sex on videotape involving celebrities and satanic rituals. The scarlet thread of murder never ran so red as it did on August 9th. Uh, on August 9th, 1969 at uh, 150 Cielo Drive. So I guess uh, I'm about to look up the footnote on the Cielo Drive thing. But basically, uh, just speaking again with the MK Ultra subconscious program and how, you know, Manson was a puppet himself like they made him seem like this mastermind matter of fact here it is where the brethren alton sterling you know uh who got shot by the cops in uh in baton rouge you know you got that brethren in new york that got choked out and killed for selling loose cigarettes but yet you got charles manson is still alive you know and you know and in essence you know they go back to him to to boost his his legend, you know what I'm saying? But yet they won't think twice to kill somebody who's selling, you know, loose cigarettes trying to make a living. <laughs> you know, again, this is the obvious shit that, you know, that we can't fake. And this uh, is about us bringing this to the light. Like, no longer just, uh, you know, looking to the side about any of this. You know, this is the reality of the situation that, you know, in order for us to stop stop the madness we gotta acknowledge the madness you know like in order to fix a problem you gotta acknowledge the problem first and foremost and then start fixing on it you know it's not from hiding and acting like something is not happening you know but you know uh that's basically it because matter of fact i would like to do another video getting deeper uh into other aspects Matter of fact, and since I'm right here, speaking on Charles Matt Manson, famed American convict behind the Sharon Tate murder and eight other Manson murders committed by his devoted runaway and vagabond followers, Manson operated a small cult w where mind control, drugs, and brainwashing techniques were used to create willing assassins. The murders included occult themes and, belie and belief in a coming apocalyptic race war dubbed by Manson is held to skelter. Manson was reportedly a theta clear level Scientologist while in prison and according to some researchers may have been handed uh, may have been handled by a higher level cult. Manson is currently in prison and while still clinically insane is arguably America's most famous living convict. 
Hey, let's go to the jailhouse and let's see Manson. You know, the guy who killed people. But yeah, we choke out Melanated Brothers for selling cigarettes. <laughs> you know, again, actions speak louder than words, you know what I'm saying? Christopher Columbus raped and pillaged. They got statues of him, you know what I'm saying? Thomas Jefferson loved fucking his slaves, you know? Fucking over, you know? People, they get statues and stuff like that. You know, showing you, like, how, you know, how they, uh, they honor pedophilia, you know what I'm saying? You know, just by honoring the Catholic Church the way they do, you know what I'm saying? That's honoring pedophilia. But you see, as a matter of fact, the subconscious programming, like with, uh, Manson said there is a race war coming called Helter Skelter, you know, trying to program this race war into people's heads, you know. Again, all programming. These people uh, go to school, you know, get these degrees, you know, places like Hollywood and, you know, in uh know all these movie makers and, and new and news uh places like CNN and all this they make sure they get you know graduates who have some of the best education where well, the education is in knowing how you know people minds work and how to manipulate it so when it comes when shit hits the fan it's like oh well you know we didn't know but no you go around making sure that you hire people that has a skill set of being, you know, extremely smart in this particular area. So, you know, it makes no sense when you claim like, oh, yeah, well, we didn't know. We didn't know. I mean, you study, you study addicts, Aldous Huxley and, and Sigmund Freud and, and Carl Jung and all this. And you tell me you don't know how the mind works. It, it's like, you know, again, the contradiction is like. You do all this study and all this reading, but yet I still don't understand why. <laughs> I still don't know what's going on. You know, it's like, but it's down to us to just become aware, you know. And again, not being fear mongered by none of this, not over focusing on this. Again, this awareness, because now that we know about all this, and it's like, all right being uh more aware when we watching movies and watching certain uh television shows if even if even watching that much you know what i'm saying but you know it helps to have that awareness you know to know uh that alistair crowley is, is responsible for the alien and that so all the movie people again is into uh all the movie people is into this esoteric knowledge matter of fact even down to 007 I done spoke on that you know uh you know in an esoteric manner at first was the word you know dealing with word magic at first was the word and the word is God you know and with the Freemasons you know they got a little thing where they you, know, you grab your your testicles you say two ball cane you know two ball cane is like the 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 father in essence of the, of the masonry vibes but you know two balls and one cane you know what I'm saying you know, what what also look like two balls and one cane in which you probably used to seeing it you know uh double o seven you know you put the seven in the middle and it kind of look like you know like a phallus and two balls you know because my word is bond James Bond that is <laughs> you know what I'm saying like that, that exact correlation and I spoke to that in another video again with the uh so with the fake uh the maritime law we're dealing with the court system you know what I'm saying and uh I'm speaking on word is Bond and Jimmy Bond but I forgot but yeah but say for instance 007 oh testimony you know, like the first, the the first testament, the New Testament, and the Old Testament. Uh, testament stems from testimony. Testimony stems from the word testis, which means testicles, are your balls, your body, your like when you have a testimony, you are having the the balls to speak up. You know, this is my testimony. That's why you know, in a lot of uh, you know, uh, 
church situations, you know, they wouldn't really let the females testify in church because they don't have no testes. They don't have no balls, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, to testify, to bring their testimony up. You see, again, correlation, the Freemasonry, two ball cane, word is bond. All I have in this world is my balls and my word. You know, they, they, and, and, and what are these two things, where that quote comes from? Movies, Scarface, Hollywood. The word from a holly tree, magic, bling, program the subconscious. Oh, that's what it you know that's why Mickey Mouse you know got the little hat you know when he got the little wine you know and left what it was like a Fantasia movie or whatever matter of fact Ronald Reagan used to be an actor <laughs> Ronald Reagan uh Ronald Reagan hosted the grand opening of Disneyland in 1955 just saying <laughs> Same person who, uh, you know, their wife made sure they had an astrologist around them to, uh, you know, consult with before they signed paperwork. You know, Ronald Reagan would consult with an astrologist before he signed paperwork. Oh, man. It's, and again, as in everything I just said in here, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. You know, do your own research, you know, because it's possible, it's always possible that. You know, uh, misinformation could pop up, things of this nature, you know what I'm saying? As the whole thing with studying, you know, is to be open-minded about it, you know. I just learned, you know, sharing this this information and, uh, you know, learning this information, something new could pop up that change. And I would have to, you know, again, uh, not be stubborn, you know, to know like, oh, all right, damn, you know, some new information came through what it's talking about. Compared to if I was stuff and like, oh no, I just studied all that shit and something new that can't be real. Listen, that it's like because my ego is so fixated on what I learned already. It's like, nah, you know, things could possibly change, or you know, you may find new information, things of this nature. So you know, do your research. Feel free again. Well, definitely research. You know, all almost everything. All this, the names I talked about. You know, the Jules Verne's the. The, the Freud's, the HP, Lovecraft, you know. They like, all, oh, you know. Wilhelm Reich. I don't know, I just stopped on his picture. Some told me to stop on his picture. From, uh, born in 1897, transition 1957. Austrian psychoanalyst. See all these psychoanalysts. Psycho. Oh, I studied. Jung, I studied uh, Freud, but yet you're just so dumbfounded on on, on how you manipulate people's minds. That don't go together. You know, it's like uh, being a brain surgeon, doing brain surgery on somebody, and then they like, you know, uh, like, why are you doing this? Like, I'm, let me think of a good example. I'm going to think of it. But anyway, Austrian psychoanalysis, well known as the second generation following Freud and the most radical, Reich attempted to harmonize psychoanalysis with Marxism and later influenced many young student radicals through his book, The Mad Psychology of Fascism, which would later become popular. Reich was uh, interested in sexology, particularly in relation in biomechanical feedback and other far-flung theories arising from his Oregon Institute. Reich was arrested by the FBI in 1941 under suspicion of being involved in sub sub subversive activities and espionage. All right. So I guess, you know, uh, which of course, espionage, in a sense, which it could be true. He could have been, you know, because that, that name Wilhelm Reich, I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, well, Austrian, but that's like, you know, that German area, you know, he could have been, you know, uh, like a little spy. Matter of fact, Arnold Schwarzenegger could have been a spy too. But anyway, <laughs> you know, matter of fact, it's said that Arnold Schwarzenegger is uh, actually a love child from one of the Rothschild, like uh, that Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you see, that's where, too, 
those tabloids and stuff like that and don't sleep on them tabloids like them tabloids is a way for them to say like hey we put it out there that so and so going through this crazy shit but you know y'all you know we, but they, and I say y'all think they you know they create the picture of you know making these tabloids seem like oh you know it's just a bunch of crazy stuff you know but you know, they be having a you know little truths in them tabloids and stuff like that <laughs> you know to make it seem like oh wait something it's like but yeah, you never know uh, could have been espionage but yeah anyway with Arnold Schwarzenegger you know and we see him just become like just come from out of nowhere come from a different country you know as if like you know as if buff people didn't exist before on a Schwarzenegger or something you know what I'm saying it's like you know, he got to the stardom on such a high level quickly you know and to the point of becoming a uh, what is like the governor of California at one time you know, you know and it was said a while back that his parents was possibly a Rothschild you know because what happened was you know the information was out there enough to the point where it's like all right we at least got to put it out there as a conspiracy you know that's how it work it's like all right it's out there enough to where people could come across this information and find out that we just bold face lying so we gotta at least make it like you know come out and say like well yeah it's possibly a speculation that uh you know that on the Schwarzenegger is a a, a child of you know that comes from the Rothschild family, you know. Like now we gotta say that. <laughs> but you know, the whole uh, that whole vibe though again with the uh, <laughs> the tabloids and stuff like this, all these crazy stories, you know. As a matter of fact, if uh say for instance, if uh Terry Crews, you know, the the brethren, the big uh buff black brethren, uh, you know, if, if his situation, you know, that he coming out about, you know, up front, like where this man, you know, at this little Hollywood party, wherever they was at, where this man grabbed him on his genitals, you know what I'm saying, on some I own you type of shit. You know, if if it was further back in the day and say, cause now's the time, that's why he coming out with it. Cause you know, he feeling that energy, you know, like fuck that shit. But like, you know, that happened a while back, you know, that could have been a tabloid story. Like, uh, Terry Crews claimed that somebody grabbed his testicles at a party, you know, and this and that. And with him not speaking, being scared to speak out on it, you know, they, it would kind of throw it off. Cause here they're like, oh, well, it can't be true. Cause he's not speaking out on it, you know? So it's like, that's how the tabloid could have that sauce and you're not even knowing it, you know. Because, yeah, if they had that back in the day, we'd probably be in a place of, like, I don't even want to speak on this and this and that. But people know it exists and they broadcast it on that level. So it's like, well, you know, we're going to put it in the tabloid. I ain't going to be in real news. We're putting a tabloid so we can't say, you know, we did speak on it. <laughs> you know, that's the whole whole vibe but I think that's basically it y'all yeah cause I wanna come back and uh get more into these other vid uh other movies as well but just to Revamp the basis of what this video was started. Stanley Kubrick walking with his boy Arthur Clark and some other Nazi officials. Quote quotations. Whatever one's view of the space program and the moon landing. There is evidence that trickery and deception were involved, as well as the use of Disney sound stages for some shots. And again, reference to Dave McGowan, which Dave McGowan is in this book as well. That name, I've seen Dave McGowan. Where yet? Where yet?
matter of fact, uh, just to give you some more people to research. Mercia Iliad, born 1907, transitioned 1986, Romanian philosopher, writer, and comparative religion scholar, Iliad's work focused on religious experience and notions of the sacred and the profane time and eternity, and notably his own version of the Nietzschean concept of eternal return, where religious initiates actually participate and the eternal mysteries of classic myths. So, Mercia Iliad, M I R C E A, Iliad, E L I A D E. Let's see. Eon Fleming, 1908 to 1964, English author and naval intelligence officer. Fleming is best known as the creator and author of the James Bond novels. Word is Bond, <laughs> based, <laughs> based in part on his own life, as well as other Secret Service uh, agents and their real-world exploits, as well as villains based on the likes of Aleister Crowley. The, in my fact, and, and I got to start to say that, you know, they're creating these people, you know, look like, here it is that they worship, I say worship, but they study Aleister Crowley and deal with his information, but because they know of the agenda and, you know, part of Aleister Crowley agenda, you know, like, uh, as far as, like, making these things seem so scary and devilish, and plus a lot of Aleister Crowley just was just, like, tapping into things to the most he could, you know, he wasn't really getting the full understanding of things, but, uh, you know, making Aleister Crowley a villain in his work to, to just create more of that imagery, imagery of him, like, being, like, all oh, this person you should be scared of, the 666, the beast, oh, be scared, you know, like, to, to amplify that vibe, you know, but, uh, the 007 novels offer insights into the shadow government apparatus, psychological warfare, propaganda, and aspects of the esoteric. Fleming's Fleming's Bond would eventually become one of the most recognized icons in the world, as well as one of the most successful Hollywood franchises of all time. Mm, Eon Fleming. Michael Foucault. Foucault, F-O-U-C-A-U-L-T, 1926-1984. French philosopher, social uh, theorist and cr and critic of uh, modern modern modernity modernity like modern but I T Y then <laughs> French philosopher social theorist and and critic of modernity generally considered postmodern Foucault stressed the relationship of power and knowledge and institutions as well as sexuality. Analyzing the history of ideas such as discipline, punishment, and the institutionalization of madness, Foucault attempted to develop an ar arche archaeological or archaeology of ideas. Foucault believed civilization coincided with madness, yet remained a committed liberal in, in his advocacy for socialism and homosexuality. So, hey. In which let's see this is the beginning of the book so he's not necessarily uh don't really have anything to do with a particular movie but. I want to uh oh, here we go so I talk about David McGowan. David McGowan is a, uh, you know, the person who cited the, uh, the information dealing with Stanley Kubrick filming the moon landing uh, in cahoots with Disney at the Disney Studio. David McGowan was a person that was a uh, reference. Uh, matter of fact, David McGowan from uh, 1960 to 2015, so he recently uh, transitioned. 
<laughs> veteran analysis and researcher of conspiracies and deep state events. McGowan is best known for his book, Weird Scenes Inside the Canyon. Again, I spoke to that can, you know, uh, that place in Hollywood. Uh, his book, Weird Scenes Inside the Canyon, arguing that 1960s cultural revolution was not in the final analysis uh, anti-establishment, but carefully directed away from anti-war sentiment into debauchery by the establishment. Let me read that again, because I know I... Uh, <laughs> I be having like a little dyslexic vibe sometimes, excuse me. <laughs> McGowan is best known for his his book his book Weird Scenes Inside the Canyon, arguing that uh, arguing the 1960s Cultural Revolution was not uh, in the final analysis anti-establishment, but carefully directed away from anti-war sentiment into debauchery by the establishment. McGowan stressed the illusionary uh, illusory nature of official government narratives on many historical events questioning the veracity of the Apollo missions, Sandy Hook, and the Boston bombing. Hmm. So his brethren was raising a lot of questions, you know. <laughs> Let's see. And then uh, Peter Lavender, I then brought up his name a few times. American author whose many books highlight hidden history, conspiracy analysis, occultism, and the crypto Crypto, crypto, cryptocracy, cryptocracy. So let's start this again. American author whose many books highlight hidden history, conspiracy analysis, occultism, and the cryptocracy. Lavender's massive Sinister Forces trilogy considers the occult side of America, pol American politics from the nation's inception to the JFK assassination to 9-11 and the hidden hand of terrorism, Lavender's works also treat uh, treat of Eastern alchemy, Vatican intrigues, Nazism, Tantrism, H.P. Lovecraft, and ritual crime. When we think about ritual crime, it's kind of like the Black Dahlia with that movie. You know, uh, it was said to be like a satanic sacrifice. I digress. <laughs> the main thing is just again seeing the correlation. All these psychologists, psychoanalysis, this philosopher, that philosopher, Plato, this person like Plato, this person like H.P. Lovecraft, Aleister Crowley, Ephesus Levi, uh, what it is, uh, Agrippa. What's the, uh, the 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 three the big three occult books written by Agrippa. I forgot his little first name or whatever. Like it's all the same little people that like a little circle. Aldous Huxley. As a matter of fact, I forgot uh which I spoke to the uh Aldous Huxley vibe, but then the brethren who uh started that little box for the uh for the experiments with the rats, with the uh, mice and stuff like that. Peace, happy now. Now's the vibrate, of course. Not going too far in the future. Not going too far in the past. Right now, now's the vibrate. You know, as a matter of fact, dealing with, you know, say fences again. Dealing with past knowledge because it's relevant to the now. You know, that's the whole thing, you know. I was the vibrate, I was chilling and in the moment like this video, which really I just erased this video uh, by mistake, and it's like now nah, was the vibrate. You just erased it by mistake, um, you know. And everything happens for a reason, so I knew when I erased it, I was like I, a little bit of my human self came out and was like ah, you know. And two, you gotta let that go. Matter of fact, uh, as I'm speaking on that, you know, uh, like where I like had to, you know, like ah, like you know, screaming out like damn. And of course, I'm like still like in the upbeat, you know, like smiling and stuff. It's like, dang, man, I got to do the video, but you know, but it was for a reason. So, you know, but again, peace.
Yeah. But now, now is the vibrate of course. Not too far in the future. Not too far in the past. Right now. It's 